Hi guys, today we're going to talk about how to configure SSH for remote access to your Cisco devices. Um, you can use SSH alongside Telnet or as an alternative to Telnet. Um, I did another video where I explain why it's a good idea to always use SSH instead of Telnet. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link in the description below. But let's go ahead and get started on how to configure SSH. Uh, right here I've listed the steps that you need to perform in order to configure SSH. Um, it's important that we do these steps in order because when you get to step four right here where you generate the crypto key, the when it is generating the crypto key it uses the host name and the domain name and you'll you'll see that once we get to that point but just uh, just keep in mind that we want to do these steps in order. So let's go ahead and hit step one. So we're going to go into configuration mode and we're going to use the hostname command to change our switch hostname to switch one. You can see our prompt here changed to switch one so we know that our hostname is now switch one. And now we're going to configure a domain name. The command to do that is IP domain dash name and then your domain name. So we're going to pretend our domain name is ninja.com. If I could spell it. And it's as simple as that. So now we've uh, created our host name and our domain name. And next is we've got to create a local user account. With Telnet you can you can use just a password but with SSH it's required that you have a username and password combination and to do that we're just going to use the local database that's on the Cisco device and to create that user account just type the command username and we'll make our username Bob and then the command password and we'll make our password Cisco so that takes care of that and now we are going to go ahead and generate our crypto key. So I'm going to expand this out a little bit. And the command you're going to use to generate that key is crypto key generate RSA. And when you do that, we'll see this message we get that says the name for the keys will be switch1.ninja.com so you can see that he used our host name and it used our domain name that we created in step one and step two and at this point you'll get prompted to uh, input how many bits you want the modulus to be uh, the most important thing to remember here is just that the larger the number the more secure the encryption is I generally use 1024 so let's go with that and the bigger you make that number, the longer it'll take to generate those keys. All right, so now we see a message that says SSH has been enabled, which is a little misleading because at this point we haven't completely set up SSH and if we try to log in using SSH at this point it would not work. We still have to configure our VTY lines much like you would have to do with Telnet. Um, so let's see if I type a question mark here I can see how many lines I have and since I want to do all of them I'm going to configure 0 through 15 by using the command line VTY 0 15. So now I'm going to configure all the lines at once. Um, the first thing we're going to type in here is login local. Now if you've done Telnet before, you know you can just type login there and then type the command password and enter a password for Telnet. But with SSH, you have to use a username and password combination. And the username and password that we are going to use, we configured in our local uh, user name and password database. So we we type the command login local and that allows us to use that uh, local username and password. And at this point, we have one more command. And right here we'll type transport input SSH. But first, before we do that, let's just type a question mark. And you can see we have four different options here. If we type all, 
that's going to allow you to use SSH or Telnet on this device. If you use none, you, you won't be able to use either one. SSH is just SSH and Telnet is just Telnet. Well, we just want to use SSH, so we're going to type transport input SSH. And at this point, we should be ready to test things out. Um, so I'm going to do that, but just look at what I've, I've typed here. Make sure you set an enable password. I'm not going to do it at this point because I just want you to see what will happen if we don't do that. So we're going to exit out of here, and this time we're going to go in through... Well, first let's try and tell net. tells us the connection is refused because we've told it we don't want to be able to use Telnet. So this time we're going to try SSH. And let's pretend like we're in we're in Virginia and our Cisco switch that we're trying to get into is um, located in North Carolina. Um, so we we get prompted for our username. That's Oops, let me just hit continue there. We get prompted for our username and password. And we're in. So everything's great up to this point. But watch what happens when I try to go into enable mode. It's not going to let me do it because I have not set my enable password. So that's why I put this note down here. Um, so if you, as you can see, if you're in Virginia, switches in North Carolina, you're going to have a little bit of a problem there because you're not going to be able to connect to that console port. But I can do that now. So I'm going to go back in, and we're going to go into configuration mode. Enable. I'll make it a secret password so that it's more secure. We'll make that password Cisco. And we're going to go back out and test it one more time. SSH. Bob. And password Cisco. We're in. Let's try to get to enable mode. We get prompted for our password. Enter Cisco. And now we're free to configure the switch. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, keep checking back and if the videos are helpful, uh, click subscribe or click like. Thanks a lot. Bye.